just crack it again. Th those are your pods, so just like take a couple of dolls, whatever you need, mix them on that there. Break your pods? Uh, just that was all these boys. He's good, he's good. <laughs> I'll just let you tear away, unless, you, unless you're like, hand up, teacher. Uh, you're going to talk us through this? I room? just <laughs> introduce it and then be like... How, how do you start the game? Like, that's what I mean. Alright, oh, right, right, right. Uh, sort of just get the main shapes and take it from there. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it, there's no science to it, like it sounds very scatty. But I'll, I'll try and take some of me. Okay. Welcome to We Are Moves' second video in their October campaign, Mind Your Head. I'm joined with Connor Miner and Stephen Ferris. What's the crack, lads? Not yeah. much. Looking forward to this night. See how we get on. Are you Zardy, Miner? No, far from it. No, definitely not. Um, so this is definitely out of my comfort zone, but uh, that's something I'm looking forward to. Happy days. So today we're going to be doing a piece on somewhere local here, since we're in Belfast, we're going to do Harden and Wolf, a uh, nice wee landscape painting. Um, we're going to try anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so do you just want to get a pencil here and we'll yep. crack on? Yep. Grab away. Are these HPs? Dude. <laughs> Some are HPs. Do you know what HP means? No. no. It's the shade of colour that you're writing in. Right. So, so is it HP1 and HP2? It's Different shades? Like 1H, 2H, 3H. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah. <laughs> right. So, start. so what are these ones then? So what is your setup? I think it's maybe 6B. 6B, that'll be really dark. Really <laughs> dark. I mean, if you're feeling confident, oh, right, straight yeah. in. Yeah. 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 5H. That's really, that's the far end of the spectrum, that's really faint. So. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Uh, right, so... What I normally do when I'm starting is just take the main shapes in, so draw your horizon, just in this case, and just take the ground, look at what kind of size it's taken up on the page, draw your line across, just anywhere really, don't, don't be too precise about it, and we'll start there. Great. <laughs> Some shaky hands here. Uh, then we're just going to take Basically what Stephen's doing is look at your page, sort of try and divide it. You can draw on your canvas if you want, divide it into quarters if you want, or just do it in your mind and uh, try and look at, look at what size the creams are actually taken up. And you're on your own now. Just Oh, that's a tutorial. I thought you were actually going to tell me how I'm going to. <laughs> Do you want me to take your hat? <laughs> no, just, uh, you know. Yeah. We're at a slight angle there. I would say the front crane would be the main thing that catches your eye when you look at it. Yeah. So, so that's where you would start? That's where I start. Try and find where are the points of the corners, things I got there, the sides of it. Yeah. Draw a rough line for that there. And. Um, it's just freehand here, do we use a ruler or? I have, there's a ruler there, do you want a ruler? Or would you like a um, ruler there? I will. sketch. The less detail you have in the sketch, the more free you can be with the paint. Um, like artistic license. Artistic license. You know what that is? Nope. <laughs> Basically you can make things up and call it Call it George. Call it creativity. I think I've seen you do that before. It's got me this far. I 
tell you a good one, Stephen, actually. When we were living together, myself and Rory, we, uh, he decided to we decided to spruce the house up a bit and Rory brought his uh, university artwork into the house and put it up on the walls. So this artwork consisted of squares. Squares? Squares. Right. Just different coloured squares, different size squares. Um, I think it was like a so in the last minute panic to get the project done and he just drew squares. So, One of pieces really made you think. So yeah, if you ever want to buy square art. Peter Ma. Yeah, no, I did art through uni um, and I qualified as an art teacher but part of our portfolio was putting together uh, a body of work and I of course left at the last minute so I had to come up with a, a short term solution so I looked up some artists and all they did was paint squares that's all they did okay so put together about 10 different canvases with squares on it and uh, and then I did my best to come up with sort of a deeper hidden meaning something emotional <laughs> that on that it really you know something emotional with, this, with more squares that's <laughs> <this soul. laughs> It's like Inception, there's a square inside a square. <laughs> so if you're ever looking at any artwork with squares in it, I'm probably garage full of stuff. <laughs> How's the sketches looking? Sketchy. Oh, sketchy, yeah. Stevens is actually... He's gone into great detail here. Am I? It's looking good, like it, you know. It's all positive. You've used more detail than I have. Okay. If you're taking this seriously, I'm start. not. <laughs> I know this was a competition. I might, uh, I might hold on to yours at the end, Stephen. Just put it up for today's being. <laughs> unless, unless you're looking at. <laughs> going right, right above his fireplace. <laughs> do you do uh, anything like this at home? Many creative things. No. What do you do to keep taking over? Play it's golf. Safe. I play golf a lot. Um, that's my like. When I retired, I needed something to practice and something to like focus on, something to enjoy, but also be slightly competitive. And I think it was way too competitive. As soon as I hung up the boots, and then as time went on, I just kind of enjoy it now, and it's good crack, and it's a good way to chat to people. Where I think the only reason I like that is because I was involved in a team sport where this here is very much, well, I know we're in a group set at the minute, but if I was to sit in the house and do this, I probably would be thinking about other things rather than just concentrating on doing this. Mm -hmm. so where when I'm on the golf course, I'm chatting about going out for a pint on a Friday night, and, you know, slagging somebody for a poor shot and talking about rugby and talking about where this here would maybe, I don't know, a wee bit too deep for me if I was doing it on my own. Golf just helps you switch off. Ah, yeah, exactly right, yeah. It is. Maybe you don't have an off button. <laughs> I really struggle with switching off, but we did try that. Who's the artist? I think I told you about this before. I think you're trying to try it one night. Yes, you are. Tried to follow a YouTube tutorial. And it didn't go too well. So I ended up drawing LeBron James just. <laughs> um, Obviously. I don't think he would be looking at. I don't know what you're saying there, Stephen, just about like focusing for so long on something so small. I think I spoke to you about this before, right? Like, you would find yourself in the zone or a state of flow while it's doing it, where you can just switch off and sort of time passes and the world goes by where you're uh, doing your art. Whereas I am like Stephen there, I struggle to just sit still. Be thinking about something else. Yeah, I think for me, I've always liked art, but it was just a hobby, a pastime. But I haven't taken it off recently, just since COVID and things like that. There, and I've really, um, I've put more time into it. It's, it's shown me like it's a complete escape from whatever else it might be, football or or other bits of work or 
school, you know, like whenever I was teaching, it just, the fact that you can sit at painting or an activity, probably golf is something similar and you don't notice three, four hours go by just like that. But do you get like a feel good factor out of it? So when you complete something, so if I go and play golf or I go to the gym, when I actually finish a session and chat to my other about it, you, you get a feel good factor out of it, like a sense of accomplishment. Oh yeah, yeah. Where yeah. like as a former sports person, like that's what I craved every day was the feel good afterwards. Um, so do you get that when you are in the middle of a paint? Like obviously it takes you longer than half an hour to do something like this. Yeah. It could, it could take you a week, it could take you six months, could it? Uh, yeah, it can. Uh, there's pieces that I've worked out four months. Um, not continually, but it's just the type of thing I go back to for an hour and an hour here and an hour there. And it's funny, with, with pieces of art, I don't know if other people find this with their interests, but you kind of have to battle with it, you kind of have to grapple with it, and there's times even working away at something, you're, you're trying to capture it, but you maybe, your eyes can play tricks on you, you maybe want to draw what you think you see, but yeah. if you're, you know, it has to take a certain level of honesty and, and you, you sort of have to stick with it and there's times I'll be painting and I think I've messed it up or I think it's not coming together. And Would then, you scrap it and go again then? No, I wouldn't. No. I, I, I think that's the problem. I used to maybe do that and I used yeah. to be more temperamental with it where I wanted it to be perfect. I think perfection is... Striving for it all the time. It's, a, it's probably the main problem with people who are being creative. If you're looking for something to come out perfect, if I'm looking for the perfect picture, to be honest, I'm not going to get it. Um, I can try and come close to it, and that's that's what I do. You know, it's it's trying to improve from the last one. It's trying to just, you know, it's like the process of, of trying to make it perfect. But I know I'm not going to get that. But yeah. as long as I come to terms with that. But if I'm if something does go wrong, or it's, if it's uh, if it's not turned out the way I maybe envisioned envisioned yeah. in my head, um, then I might be more inclined to scrap it or, or just shell the painting or walk away from it for a day. But um, and what do you like to paint most? I started off doing a lot of portraiture. I started my, my interest was you know painting people, sports people. Uh, Connor was saying there about the Ron James. Uh, yeah. That was my biggest piece to date. It was huge, just a big wall piece of LeBron James, and I've right. got uh, Messi and. Tiger Woods, different um, sports pieces, and they would have taken me weeks, months. Uh, and then that was when I was. So, is that a passion for you, like to, to do more sports oriented? I don't know. Uh, I think for people who are sort of taking apart or artists, if you want to call them that, I still find it quite difficult to say that, you know, like oh, I'm an artist. But um, I think anyone that paints regularly or creates as an artist, but uh, I think finding a style and finding an area that you create and you say like that's my style, that's someone look at it and say oh that's Roy Mooney's or yeah. that's difficult. Uh, I think everyone wants that, everyone kind of rushes towards doing that, but I, I think you can't force it, you just have to keep in and just have to keep creating and eventually you'll you'll move down a direction. You'll find your sort of niche that you've Yeah, into. yeah, and I think it's like creativity, the harder you try and force it, you know, you try and strive for it. If it's too conscious, it's difficult, like, you know, you're gonna, you're not gonna get the result that you really want. Whereas if you kind of just relax, like I, like I would say when I'm painting, if you just switch off, yeah. and there's times I, like I'm sketching, I don't really know why I'm drawing a line here, I don't know why I'm doing this, but, just trust it, just keep working at it, and then when you step back, that's when you kind of go like, oh, it works. See, <laughs> see the bigger picture now. It's it's funny. It's like a you know, it's like a metaphor for life or, or for football or anything. You just keep working on the smaller pieces. You don't question it. I mean, there is days when you're maybe going to training or you're doing a gym session, and you're like, what's this for? Is it worth it? I. But oh, you just get that all the time, like you know, you just keep working at it. But your personality in that ring, really, like nearly suits it. I find 
from being friends with you. You're so chill all the time. That too chill, maybe. Yeah, sometimes. But just taught me to be more relaxed. Um, like <laughs> leave school sharp and go home and have a nap. Never would that have crossed my mind before. But you're able to just switch off so easily. Um, or sit and concentrate on something for a couple of hours, whereas I would struggle with that. Uh, always thinking it has to be go, go, go. But I think it actually helped me this year, even with performance, just being able to step back sometimes and enjoy quiet time on my own, which is hard to do. I think, yeah, I mean, I would say sort of downtime and relaxation does come easy to me. I, I have no problem in switching off and I don't, when I'm working or whatever, I don't take things home with me. I don't stir them over in my, my head too much. But, I, you know, whether it's sport or whether it's just other stress in life, things can get on top of you. And I think that's when something like art or meditation, things like that there, can sort of pick you up out of that rut, but it's difficult to do because it's sometimes the last thing you want to do, you know. Um, Absolutely. We, we got knocked out of the championship there recently and it's, it's the worst part of the year whenever football ends, you sit and thinking over a match what you could have done differently or how the season should have went and you have expectations that you obviously got short of. And, uh, Are you going for the paints? No, I'm going for a rubber. Where are the rubbers? There's panicking. Uh, you know, well, it doesn't matter. Have one somewhere. Yeah, no, there's them, Stephen. You don't. There is no mistakes. It's just creativity. You a mistake. It's all the creativity. Um, shoot. I'm going for the paint, boys. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm pretty happy with mine. My God. What might? <laughs> I just leave it at this. What might uh, speed you up is what I would do is tape can sometimes block off areas of the page so that you can focus on one area and work quickly at it. And um, obviously times of the essence here. So if you want to try using the tape, just do maybe. Uh, yeah. To speed you up, but you can watch. But as I was saying there, yeah, I think painting for me is um, it's a release valve for other things that might build up, like sports or any other stresses. But what would you would you have been good at that during your career? Stephen, whenever you were obviously playing the top, did you have things that helped you unwind, or was it very much flat to the mat? Um, flat to the mat, like a lot, but it's all well and good when you're flying, like things are going good. <coughs> Excuse me, but when you're hit with like an injury and you're out for a significant period of time, that's when you kind of. Um, you kind of need need other things to do. Like when I was injured back in 2012, like I was out for 15 months and then made a bit of a return, but I, I knew the right was on the wall at that stage. But like it was going to training, and making sure that you kept a smile on your face every day because you didn't want to bring other people down mm -hmm. with you. Like so, I was all this happy, upbeat. You know, oh, he's brilliant, and then I would jump in the car and go home and go, oh god, this is my ankle stuffed. Like what am I gonna do? I'm 26, I'm going to retire, I'm earning good money, what am I going to do next year for money, I have a mortgage to pay, you know, I have a wedding coming up, what, what am I going to do, and then like you go in the next day and you just put a brave face on it again, yeah. uh, but then you go in and you could chat to the physio and you're maybe one on one and the physio goes well to you, how are you feeling, you go, I don't want it, I'm not feeling great, and you can speak to even the physio or the SNC coach, it was Johnny Davis at the time, other people, like, you sort of rely on people more heavily. Yeah. Like, and that's something that I didn't I didn't want to do. 
but like it helped me more the more I done it um, mentally. Um, yeah, so like back then for me it was it was hard going, but if it hadn't have been for the other people around me, it would have been a hell of a lot harder. Yeah, you know. You think in sport like there's enough support mechanisms there? Like it's always very much you have to be tough and you have to. Like, all this, you know, like, like this macho sort of approach. Um, like as a rugby player, you're always like macho, you know, are you mentally weak or you're yeah. soft? Like, so if uh, somebody goes down with an injury and they've you know, picked up a bit of a bang or you know, got a stud mark in their leg and they're going down, like, it's almost like, what are you doing going down? You're soft, get back up. You're mentally weak, get back up. And that's changing, like, it's, it's changing. We feels like weekly. We're back when I played. Like it was, you know, it was, it was hard, especially in the younger guys, because the guys maybe 60, 70 caps for Ireland get treated differently to the lads that were 18, 19 years of age coming through. Yeah. And we were like just given a boot up the backside and told to harden up, where the other lads were weren't at all. Um, and yeah, it's, it's changed massively like over the last number of years. I think people are maybe realising there's more to life and like if you get things right off the pitch and you're in a good, happy place, then it's only gonna help performance. So like some boys do need a kick up there, some boys not having the shoulder, but well, it's understanding players, that. Yeah, I don't talk to players, you don't know yeah. who needs what. Yeah. Um, but then some like sometimes people don't realise um, how much just a small conversation or a short conversation can have how much of an impact or how one negative comment or phrase can stick with somebody for so long. That's it, everybody is different. Like so when I played rugby, some boys needed an arm around the shoulder, some boys needed a kick up the backside. So it wasn't just uh, treating everybody the same. Um, and that was the best coaches that I worked with were able to do that, yeah. were able to man manage lads. Of just one route for everybody, but that's good leadership. Like that's a real leader. Like the biggest aspect of leadership to me, especially just from studying it lately, it's all communication. Like you can have all the knowledge and understanding of the world, but you can't communicate to people. Like it's pointless. Uh, I'm just gonna start painting here. Like just go out. Before you start, you're taking too much time. Before you start painting. You know what I mean? these good move jumpers. <laughs> so, would you, would you stay in the apron, David? I think I'll probably go best with you. I am bar yeah. barbecuing a lot. <laughs> Basically, like so. Grillmaster. Right, grill Anything under the apron? I'll spend, spend a fortune on barbecues over the last couple of years, like. So, I'll probably have to get myself a, a good apron. Looks more like a dress, to be honest. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> is, I mean, it's that selfie, I'm <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling so far with this? Oh god, I'm just... You don't say that. Do you know what, what, what was that noise? It feels like I should use less pencil and more paint. Yeah, I'm sort of inclined to agree with you. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm just sort of sketching here. I mean when you start painting, you're going to be just painting over that. Aye. Well, maybe it's... Should have went with it. Maybe less bees. Ah, yeah, less bees. So <laughs> you went for maximum bees yeah. on that. You want to swap No, that looks well. Yeah. You used to have one like that in the house. <laughs> it was our secret hat. <laughs> How do you blend? How do you blend it in? Blend, just mix it. Mix it with your brush. You go, you go I've got more paint in my hands than the canvas. <laughs> you going with fluorescent yellow? Yeah, I'm going with Jazzy here. Jazzy. Jazzy, that's that artistic term? Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what we learned. Yeah, Where did you study then? Uh, in St. Mary's, Belfast. So I did teaching with art. Okay. But I've never actually got as far as teaching art in secondary. It's taught in primary schools for, uh, for the last maybe three years. You enjoy it? I do enjoy it. I enjoy like working with people and things like that there. It's very interactive and get to know people, you know, 
other members of staff, families, you get yeah. to, to, to work with kids. It's good fun, like, but um, it was really when things shut down about two years ago yeah. that I. Um, <laughs> oh, what, what? What's this for? That's part of it. scare me. That's just to spread it. Spread it? Yeah. Um, yeah, when things shut down and I'd find out a lot more time on my hands and you no know, football and I had um, a bit of time to get back into painting. And yeah. I just started off doing a couple of pieces for myself just for my own interest. And I had a few friends and teammates who had pictures that they had of them playing sport that they wanted me to do and they were happy to pay. It came out well and it looked well and word sort of spread from that and of course with social media nowadays everything uh, just takes off, right. you know. So it's, I haven't really looked back. Um, people would ask me, oh, am I going to go back to teaching? But I don't know, I don't think it's very soon to make a call on that. And I'm not, I don't get bogged down on long term plans. Obviously I like to be, I like to know that whatever I'm doing, it, it's supporting me and I'm, you know, at least making a, a solid living out of it. Yeah. And you enjoy it? For the time being. Yeah, I enjoy it. Exactly. For the time being, it's, it's working. I would say I'm more interested in seeing how people have made it their livelihood and seeing how they've maybe left a job or left one kind of rabbit hole or an industry that they were in and they are now, you know, branching out. I think that's more influential or inspirational yeah. for me. Um, do you ever remember a guy who was in Channel 4 and he used to do trees with a, like a, a paint uh, is this the American scraper? Guy? Yeah, the, or Canadian, is he? The, guy the bushy that, hair, yeah. Bob Ross, yeah. Bob Ross, I used to watch him all the time. That was a YouTube tutorial. He I was class. Yeah. He was so good. And he I, makes it look so easy. It. it was like a 20 minute show and he's a full painting yeah. done. He was quality. I, you're Bob following. Ross. Bob Ross. Okay. You're following him. There's a Netflix show on him now. Right. There's some big drama about his uh, his inheritance and all. Right? And there is, I don't know. I've don't, I just seen it. Is he a bit dodgy, is he? No, I think he's being, his family are being, uh, they're being swindled. Right. So they've made a, a Netflix show. Something for you to check out. <laughs> you didn't know his name a minute ago. Now you're Bob Ross. These have both gone for very different approaches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. Which I'm glad, you know, I think it tells you a lot about who you are as people. Yeah. Well, the minute mine is very dark, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot of issues. Yeah. So, how would I make this yellow slightly darker? Just a kind of grey or black or what well, you recommend? This is. It's or, is it, or is it just. Some of the few things I do know, if you add black to a colour, it'll sort of make it a dirtier colour. So, yeah. if you don't want that, if you want maybe just like a shaded yellow. Yeah. Are you talking about from underneath? Aye. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, when I'm looking at that, I don't really see yellow. It's more like a orangey, yeah. kind of dark. Oh, but even, even for the. I would say you're looking at that color maybe and that color. Okay. But it's entirely up to you. You're the pro, <laughs> like. No, no, no. It's whatever you see, Steve. Art's not really something that's probably very common in GA players, really. Have you met anyone who has, does? Uh, well, I know they are sort of few and far between. Um, I had a good chat with Neil Collins from Roscommon. He used to play as County for Roscommon. He's flying with his art career. He's got a studio down in Dublin. He's well set up down there. And who did you say, sorry? Neil Collins. New Collins. Patrick Collins, it would be. There's a guy called Mal Common. He used to play rugby. He's from up in Belfast, and the same that he's started up his own art studio or something. Very good. In Belfast? Yeah. He was overworking in finance in London for years, and then just obviously his heart wasn't in it and wasn't enjoying it, so. Did a U turn? Did a U turn, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. I suppose it is in a way, it's the road less travelled, like people kind of tend to stick to what they studied in or what they find themselves in in their early twenties. But I think 
now more than ever you're seeing people realize that jobs jobs come and go especially with COVID. I mean a lot of people yeah. were whether whether they were working from home or whether they were, were let go of their job or furloughed they kind of detached themselves from their job where I think previous generations I know my parents both teachers they sort of had that your teacher you being a teacher that was your identity you know yeah. it's a bit like you know Harry Potter when they put the hat on and it was like Gryffindor <laughs> <laughs> it was like teacher or civil servant or whatever you know that you find out when you went to uni what you were going to be and that was you put into that that kind of bracket I know long gone the days of like sitting in P6 or P7 going so what do you want to be when you grow up yeah. do you want to be a doctor do you want to be a dentist do you want to be a teacher like do you know what I mean now it's 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 all changed now everybody just wants to be an influencer like my other a long way to go <laughs> Yeah, I was reading that the, the top 10 most sought after jobs at the minute didn't exist 20 years ago. So whenever yeah. we were at school, the, those jobs, there was no such thing as, you know, maybe a coder or I don't know, whatever other IT jobs yeah. were in nowadays. But it makes you wonder as teachers, how do you, how do you try and steer someone down a, a path that hasn't even been created yet, you know. Well, this is the thing nowadays. Like, I had a lot of friends who jumped on the bus with me in the morning. We were going to tech, and I was studying um, in the sports side of things, and they were going to joinery classes and plumbing and elect being an electrician. Nowadays, like, it's, it's so hard as we all know. Like, it's so hard to get a bloody plumber or an electrician these days, and in trades. Yeah. And kids are going to venture away from that more and more, in my opinion. I agree, unless you have somebody in your family is doing it, yep. and you don't really see it um, as, as a job is going to make heaps of money, but the thing is, most people are making more money than us, well, most clients teaching, I know what I mean. 